Welcome back. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Um, while some of us are kind of trapped at home during this quarantine period for coronavirus, um, I'm just going to give you some helpful hints you can work on at home to improve your dancing um, until I can see you again, which I'm sure is going to be very soon. Um, today, I'd like to focus a little bit on our body position and how to improve our rotational figures. Um, and so there's some things we can do at home, even if we're stuck in a little tiny area, um, to help improve our dancing. And for international standard, we have what's called torsion in the body. So we don't connect frontally to our partner, although we do connect center to center. It's more through the sides to what looks to you to be your partner's left side. So whether it's man or lady, we're going to have more, and I'll exaggerate, of this body position rather than this when we're dancing. So we can do some little stretches at home to make that easier. Um, as I've talked about in my group classes, dancing is a combination of flexibility and strength. And the more you have of one, the less you need of the other. So doing these exercises at home will help you expend your energy and your dancing with getting awesome flight and big shapes rather than just putting yourself from point A to point B. Um, also, you'll find your movement is a lot more graceful if you're a little bit more flexible. We never want to push ourselves in our dancing to the point that we reach our maximum point of flexibility. Because once I get there, it stops. And we really don't want to ever have, unless it's tango um, or some sort of like quick, quick step movement, generally we don't want to have a stop on our dancing. We're going to get from one position to another, and as soon as I get to my max, then I shift and I go the other way. It's going to be visually more pleasing to look at. If you hit your maximum flexibility, you can't help but stop and then switch, and the dancing looks a little bit jerky or not graceful, even if an untrained dancer is looking at you. So my suggestion, if you're getting ready in the morning, if you have a mirror somewhere in your house, um, which I assume you all do, I want you um, to stand sideways to your mirror, so sideways, and then we're going to shape this both ways. We're going to twist our body sideways. And we're going to twist our body the other way, sideways, and sideways. Um, and for now, we're going to keep the feet stationary. While you're dancing, your knees are actually going to go with it, so here. But to increase the, the flexibility here is where I see my students kind of their weak point. So I would initially have you take, keep your legs straight, although when you're dancing, you're going to bend with the knees too. And that's where the shape's going to come from. We'll talk about that in another mini lesson. But anyway, uh, rotational figures. That, that torsion is super important. Um, whether it's a reverse turning figure that turns to the left or a natural turning figure that turns to the right. So let's isolate, for example, a runaround for the lead. Um, there's different ways we can get into this, but say if we did this from a, a whisk, we would unwind the feet, and I want you to think about pushing her with the tummy. So what I tend to see with my students is arms, and instead, I want to leave my lady behind. So think about arms, just like you did in front of the mirror, and then unwind, stay low with the feet, turning on the balls of the feet, and push her with your tongue. And I hear the leads complain, well, I can't go, she's heavy. She is following you, so by definition, she's behind you. Yeah, she's behind you, she's not gonna be with you, otherwise she'd be stuck to you like a sticky pad and it wouldn't look like that beautiful flowering action that we expect to see, that we enjoy to see in international standard. So go ahead and leave her behind. Don't worry, she's coming, she knows what's going on. I'll catch up as lady. Just leave your hands behind you, leave them behind you. You unwind the feet and she'll catch up and then she'll keep going and you're going to follow her at the end of each figure and then usually you would turn a promenade um, and scoop out. Um, for ladies, we're going to have torsion as well. So um, again, there's a million ways to get into a run around, but we'll pretend we're doing like a little whip. So I'm going to unwind. This is just what you did in front of the mirror. I don't know if you can see, but my nose is leading. Unwind, and then I run around, running around. I 
and usually this is at the end with some sort of scoop to promenade. Um, so, ladies, um, when I'm doing the runaround, people often ask the timing. This is going to depend on your choreography, but I would do something musical. What I don't want to see is what I call gerbil feet. Do something musical. Could be a walk around. Walk, two, three. Could be a run around. One and two and three and. Uh, but do something either on the beats or the one and two and three and. Um, usually the first step is going to be a slow because that will be a power step and then the rest of the beats are actually the running ones. So, um, so one, two, and three, and for, ex for example, would be a common variation. Um, another thing I want to talk about with the body rotation, and ladies, this is going to be especially obvious in you because we do the big, 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 big shapes. I want you to think about delaying or spiraling the rotation through the body. Um, this will help in your promenade position and your runaround. So I'm not going, I'll exaggerate, you're not this bad, guys. One, we don't want to do the head first or everything as one unit. What I'm thinking about doing is starting with the foot, then the knee, then the hip, then the shoulders. The head is the very last thing to go. I would do that same thing if I was turning to promenade position. I'm not going to go promenade, right? I'm going to go knees, hips, and the head is the very last thing. As a matter of fact, I'm going to turn that head I'm not going to complete my promenade position until I'm halfway through the next figure. So, for example, if I were turning to promenade position, four, five, six, and one, as opposed to what I tend to see in the Portland area from the dancers is four, five, six, one. Um, and the head is going so soon that it's kind of sucking the shape out. Um, so that flowering shape comes from me as that lady Delaying my head to the very last second. If you're at home practicing and stuck practicing in a tiny post it stamp of the living room, you can think about just playing waltz music in the background or even just counting out loud um, and turning to promenade position. One, two, three, and four. So I'm not maxing out my open head position until the er of the four. So one, two, three, four, er, five, and six. Um, same thing with that runaround. I'm not going and go and leaving with the head. The head's going to be a little bit more delayed. Um, doo -doo -doo. And let's talk about spin turns for a second. That's the um, foundation of pivots. Super common rotational figure. I want to do the same thing. And I want to keep my head left and have torsion in the body. So what I tend to see is flat, flat, and rocking back and forth. Instead, we're going to think about rotating the foot, rotating the knee, rotating the body. So we can see my head is still left of my hip, even though I'm rotating. So it's not a unit and swing around and rotate. It's torsion. And then I rotate. I'll show that again. Incorrect and incorrect. So this is what I tend to see um, for my students. Go around. Go around. As a matter of fact, a lot of you leads even keep your head right, which is even worse than being centered. We don't want to go here. If anything, keep your head too far left, or what's going to feel to you to be too far left? On your pivots, keep it left. Uh, ladies, you're going to be more left. Leads, you still want to be left. You got it. This is going to, if you keep your head Left of your hip, it's going to help turn your center so that you can feel what the heck you're doing. If your head is right, it's actually going to put your body cattywampus to her, and it's very difficult for her to connect to you. And that gives you two choices. I can jack up my shape to connect, or I can just be heavy. And um, you don't want that. So keep your head left of your hip. Lead your head in all these stances is going to be uh, a little more upright than hers, but it's still left of your hip. Not centered and certainly not right. So for lead on that spin turn, keep it left. Keep it left. And turn that foot in. Um, leads, the rotational lead is going to come from the foot angles, not from taking her to your left or right with the arms. You're going to be very still with the top line. 
and all these rotational figures. So in the spin turn, for example, just a bronze figure, keeping it still, still, still. Whatever you're doing, it is still. What I tend to see, I'm exaggerating, not this bad, but I tend to see take her there and take her there. Um, another thing we can do at home to help our leads rotationally, ladies, this will help you as well, though I tend to see this problem more in the men, is practice turning in. Most people have natural turn out in the feet, so this is an easy position. So for example, step two in your spin turn for man, you would have turn out. So we turn in, we turn out, we turn in. But if you don't have a natural turn in, this can be really awkward to get, and then we end up with a choppy action. So that first step of your spin turn lead, um, if you look at my feet, it's gonna be maximum turn in. Can you see that? I'm gonna exaggerate. Then I roll onto the foot, and I have maximum turn out. Maximum turn in. If I were to do a reverse turn from here, a reverse pivot, maximum turn in. That turn in is what's going to lead the rotation. It's not me jacking my girl around with my arms. Um, and ladies, I respond appropriately, although it's a little bit easier for ladies who are more naturally flexible than him, but for my footwork for the spin turn, I'm going to think about maximum turn out. And ladies, what I see you do is go to the right. I want you to think about, if anything, going diagonal center or connecting with his knee, the inside knee, that's another way to think of it. Turn out, then I turn in and drive to the wall, and then I turn out, and then usually this is followed by a reverse turning figure, I would turn out again. Um, so, um, let's think about our little flexibility exercises at home in our living room this week. We're gonna think about maxing, I know this is not comfortable, but just work on this a little bit. If you do once in the morning, once at night, you're gonna get super flexible, you'll definitely see results. Even if you don't stretch, if you dance, it's gonna happen with time, but why not make it happen faster and make yourself a better lead or a better follow, prettier follow now by doing these little exercises. So we talked about our, our flexibility with the feet, especially with the turn in is what most people need to work on. Um, and then we talked about the flexibility of the upper body, so think about this stretch and this stretch and go back and forth just really slow do that while you're watching tv um, and you'll look like a rock star in no time so thank you so much for watching joining me today i look forward to seeing you soon make sure as soon as this crazy coronavirus stuff is over that you come back and support all your local dance studios since this has been a very hard time for them um, and I know they all miss you very much. I miss you very much. I cannot wait to dance with you soon. Have an awesome day. Thanks guys. Bye-bye